Good afternoon and welcome everyone to the uh, MI210 lecture series. We've been working along uh, through um, several topics now in population PK and PD, uh, most recently with data requirements and, uh, and points to consider during the data assembly process. Um, I had hoped to move into next some um, population uh, modeling with, with the hands-on SIMI interface, but we ran into a couple of technical difficulties with the SIMI interface uh, over the last week here, which are, which are under construction, but uh, it's going to preclude us from doing that today. So I'll start off with my apologies for not being able to jump into that this week. Um, we, uh, we will have time to cover all the material in the course, and I'm certainly willing to put in an extra week or two if we need it at the end, but uh, we, we, we did have a couple of buffer weeks anyway. Um, but I'm going to take some time today instead to, to get us started on some of the other ancillary topics that are not, um, that are not lecture topics, but uh, that we still need to review. Uh, those include the, the requirements for the course project and the midterm exam. So let's start with the course project. You should see up in my screen now, and this, this is uh, included as Appendix A in your course handout. Uh, all of you who are taking the course for, for credit, uh, for certificate, is, um, are, are required to complete a small population modeling project. This is a large component of the grades, 50% of the grade, and um, this will be due within the final within two weeks of the final course lecture. So there's plenty of time to get this done, um, but I'd encourage you to start thinking about it now, um, particularly when we don't have homework uh, um, assignments uh, over the next two weeks. In conducting this project, we'll be using the Metrum Institute SIMI server for analyses, so you don't have to worry about having your own NAMM installation and tools. Uh, uh, you can use our server for that um, during this semester. The requirements for the course are as follows. Now, th these projects will be s defined by the students themselves. And I'd encourage you to choose a real-world problem, something that might be relevant to your current uh, work efforts. Uh, but if you need to, we can also uh, help you out with a simulated data set. Um, what I would like to do, though, is to ask you to maintain uh, uh, some reasonable run times here is to, is to restrict the size of the data set. And so if it's an extensively sampled data set, let's limit that to 30 individuals or less. If it's sparsely sampled, limit to 100 individuals or less. Uh, this, this will allow us to um, allow you to move quickly through this project and also uh, since this is a shared computing environment, uh, it's not going to overload uh, the system uh, in an unfair way to other students. I'd also suggest that you choose a system that, uh, for example, in pharmacokinetics, that's a linear PK system, something that does not require a uh, numerical solution of differential equations. Okay, so you're going to need to include a data specification document and an NMTRAN formatted data set. And you're going to have to put these together using whatever tools you'd like. You can use R if you like, uh, as we'll show you in the class. Um, or you can use Excel, SAS, whatever tools you'd use. What I'm more interested in is that you uh, get the specifications correct and that the NMTRAN data set is formatted correctly for, um, for use with non-MEM. Now, the analysis doesn't have to be all that extensive, but I would like you at least to develop two alternative population models. One could be what we might call a base model and another a final model. Uh, for a single endpoint and, and compare them on the basis of different factors. So the minimization status, diagnostic plots, goodness of fit statistics, the model output, parameter point estimates, and the precision of parameter estimates. These are all uh, typical diagnostics that we would look at. We've summarized all of these in the lectures already uh, and I'd like you to consider all of them in comparing uh, the model fits for your project. Then, I want you to summarize the methods, results, and conclusions. Uh, it can be quite brief here, um, but uh, make sure that you have supporting figures and tables. Uh, include sections that are consistent with regulatory guidance documents, which we'll, we'll cover that topic later in the course. 
Uh, and, uh, you know, it'd be nice if you could supply a, a brief report format in, in a PDF document. That way there's no issues with uh, software compatibility or, uh, or different operating systems. As part of this, I want you to discuss the results, including the assumptions that you made or the assumptions that are inherent, inherent in the analysis methods. And then also to attach supplemental files, including the uh, data spec document, the NMTRAN data set, and the control streams and output files for at least the two models that you're comparing. So pretty straightforward. This is, uh, this is typical to what you might do in your first uh, real world analysis. Uh, I want to give you the chance to, to do that in this class and get some feedback. Um, and as far as I'm concerned, you can start right now on this. Uh, start, start thinking about the, the analysis data set, creating a data spec document, uh, formatting the NMTRAN data set. We've, we've been through all of that, uh, so that should be no problem. Um, and then as you get to other points, you know, feel free to, to discuss with me uh, through the discussion boards or, or email, and uh, we'll help shape this together. Keep in mind that what I'm looking for here is not a, a huge effort, but really um, a concise um, project that addresses the key features of the course, the essentials of, of, of the population PK modeling. We don't have to do any simulation in this, although if you'd like to do some simulation as part of your project, uh, you're, it's, it's fine if you'd like to do that, but I I'd, I'd first want this project to be focused on data set creation, model development, comparison, and then conclusions from the modeling. Okay. All right. Um, any questions on that? Great. Well, let's move to the next topic then. So the, the, the course project is due within two weeks of the final lecture. You can turn it in at any time throughout the semester if you finish it beforehand. Um, but uh, you could certainly get a good start on it right now, given what we've covered already. Okay, the other thing I want to cover is the midterm exam. And you'll see we've got a slightly uh, newer, refreshed-looking uh, course website interface. It's the same content, it's just a, a different look now. Um, let me blow this up a bit. <clears throat> so we move to... Uh, Let's see, for this week here, we talked about the course project, and I'm, and I'm going to get you started on the midterm exam as well. The midterm exam is, is posted in the following week. It's actually due at the end of that week uh, on May 3rd. Um, but if you want, when you're ready to take this exam, all you need to do is, is click this link, MI210 midterm. It's going to, um, well, it opens today at 2 p.m., and it will close Tuesday uh, at 2 p.m. I'd like you to try to get it done before class starts next week. Um, what we can do here is, is uh, preview the, the um, midterm. And you'll see it's, it's a multiple choice test. Uh, in each case, there's one answer to choose. Okay, we've got 20 questions. You can uh, experiment, you can read through this, you can, you can answer questions, and then at the, as you run through this, you can save it without submitting, and only submit all and finish when you're, when you're completely done and, and, and you're sure that uh, that's the exam you want to submit. Now I would ask you to please do this on your own. This is an independent study, it's not a group project. Do this on your own. You may use the, the course recordings, the course notes, uh, and any supplemental material to answer this. It's an open book test, uh, but uh, I'd ask you to do this on your own. Um, th this highlights, you know, these 20 questions highlight uh, some of the key points here in the first part of this course, and, um, and they're all things that we've covered in class. What I'm going to do is, uh, is this Friday I'll come online for, um, well, let's, let's put it this way. If there are um, discussion questions sent to me through the discussion board, I'll come online and answer those at Friday's lab. But I'm going to give you the whole time here to work on this exam, um, as well as getting started on the course project. Uh, and uh, post questions, and, and uh, I'll get online on Friday and answer any of those questions um, without 
actually giving you the answers to the to the exam questions. So that's the plan for this week and next. Next week uh, we are off teaching the intro Bayesian course in Philadelphia, so we won't have a, a lecture or lab next week. Um, by that time we'll have all of the the um, the kinks worked out in in in, some, in the SIMI interface uh, that that showed up this week. Um, in fact, it's just about fixed, uh, and we'll. Um, will be running non-mem the following week after after the uh, after we get back from this Bayesian course. So um, apologies again for uh, the the delay in getting to the hands-on piece, but we'll just make use of the time now to to get started on the, on the course project and the midterm, uh, and then we'll hit the ground running when uh, when we start again on May fourth. Uh, okay, so that's that's the plan. Please remember, if you have questions about the exam content, questions about the the course materials, uh, or questions about the course project, please uh, continue to send those through the discussion boards, and I'll address those at this Friday's lab. I'll pause for a moment to take any questions now. Okay, well then I'd suggest that you go ahead and use the time and start working on this. Uh, you should well easily uh, be able to, to complete this exam within the, uh, within the usual lecture period uh, and then probably uh, uh, next week get a good start on your course project as well. But, but remember, if you're taking this for, for certificate credit, uh, we, we do expect you to complete this, submit it, and be done with it by uh, two weeks from today. Okay, thanks for your attention, uh, good luck, and uh, don't hesitate to ask if you have questions.